It was a rough day to start the week for shares of Uber and even more so for Lyft. And that's because a Tesla vehicle was seen driving with no safety driver in Austin over the weekend. Now, this isn't something that should be particularly surprising because Tesla has been testing since early this summer. Eventually, they were going to pull that safety driver. The question is, what does it mean for the industry overall? Is Tesla just going to absolutely dominate the industry? Obviously, that's what the market is thinking right now. They think this is a real threat to Uber and Lyft. I think something different is ultimately going to happen. I think the demand that Uber and Lyft have aggregated in the ride sharing market is ultimately going to be their point of power. And they have very different business models when it comes to autonomy than Tesla. Tesla is trying to be a vertically integrated supplier. They want to manufacture vehicles all the way to running a ride sharing app. I don't think that ultimately is going to take the kind of market share that they need because they need. And part of the challenge is that this does not mean that they are going to be able to scale their business any more than any of their competitors. They are already well behind Waymo today. And you have a bunch of other competitors who are now suppliers to Uber and Lyft that are coming to the market not only this year, but also in 2025. So I want to go through what the strategies look like, why I don't think this is a huge threat for Uber and Lyft. These are two of the positions I have in the asymmetric portfolio, and I will likely continue to add if the stocks continue to struggle over the next few months. My name is Travis Holliam. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. If you want more from me, check out my Asymmetric Investing newsletter. There's a link in the screen and a link in the show notes. That's where I've got my market beating portfolio. So if you love what you hear on YouTube, I think you're going to love that research. And I also want to thank this video sponsor, Fiscal AI. I use Fiscal AI all the time for my research. And one of the things I do is things like this. I pull in comparisons of key performance indicators for companies like Uber. How many rides are they doing per year? Well, the answer is about 3.5 million rides. That's 67 million rides per week. Waymo doing about 450,000 rides per week. That's a big number, but it helps to put those numbers into comparison. Lyft, on the other hand, much smaller, 250 million rides in the past year. I'm going to use Fiscal AI throughout this video. So if you like what you see from them, check out fiscal.ai slash ASYM. You can try out their pro version for free for two weeks and then get 15% off. Now, I'm going to come back to the numbers in just a second. But what I want to lay out is what the strategy for these companies is going to be. Because Tesla right now is trying to do basically everything on their own. What the market's reacting to is if they're able to pull this safety driver, the thought is millions of vehicles suddenly become fully autonomous vehicles. I don't think that's actually going to be the case. Remember, in Austin, they're operating in a relatively small area. They have mapped that entire area. We don't know how scalable this is going to be. We also don't know some of the safety outcomes. I'll get to some of that in just a second. Some of the questions that we should have about Tesla's autonomy. But let's look at the strategy first, because Uber and Lyft are not trying to do this all on their own. This is from a presentation that Uber gave earlier this year. So there's actually a few more uh, partnerships that have been added, but these are partners that they had in autonomy. So basically think about it as Uber being the demand source and then these autonomous vehicles companies being the supply. So if you are Waymo, you want to have your vehicle operating as much as possible. You want to do as many rides as you possibly can. Are you going to do that with the Waymo app? Or are you going to lean on somebody that you know already has a ton of demand like Uber? That's what they're doing right now. And so if you're Uber, what you want is you want as many autonomy suppliers as you can possibly have. They invested in Neuro earlier this year. They've got a partnership with NVIDIA. So that could be a number of different automakers that are bringing NVIDIA's chips and technology to the market. So you want to have a lot of suppliers so you're not reliant on any one supplier. If you're relying on one supplier, they have all the power in the market. You want your power to be that you have aggregated that demand. And then you're able to be the distributor of who's actually going to pick this person up or this food, whatever's getting delivered. Who's actually going to do that work? And you're able to put that on different suppliers in the autonomy space. Lyft has a very similar strategy. This is how they see the market. And you can see the partnerships that they have right there in the middle. Baidu, Marubini, Mobileye, Tensor, Bentler, May Mobility, NVIDIA again, and then also Waymo. So a lot of the same partners. And again, they're trying to commoditize that supply. What Lyft is bringing to market is FlexDrive. That's going to be, they're actually going to do the work of cleaning vehicles, making sure they're operating them, at least in certain cities. And that's something they've kind of leaned into with their partnership with Mobileye and then FreeNow in Europe. FreeNow is a taxi company. So you get a ride through FreeNow, but then a taxi is going to come pick you up, not an individual driver. So they're already used to working with fleets in Europe. And that's something that I think they're going to leverage to expand with autonomy in Europe as well. So again, that's the way that they're thinking about the market is that Lyft and Uber are going to continue to be the aggregators of demand and they're trying to commoditize supply as much as they possibly can. So let's go through where that supply sits because Tesla is obviously getting the attention today 
This is some of the reporting from Electric. They're really on top of this. Uh, so you can see that they've been reporting that there is actually testing going on without a safety driver. The challenge is we don't know how much that's going to scale. Pulling the safety driver is one thing. Doing it safely is another. And what we know so far from very little data, not only, not, not only to Texas and Austin, but also to national regulators, is that there are at least seven crashes that have happened in a relatively small number of miles in Tesla vehicles. Autonomy is not going to take all crashes out of the picture. And even Waymo, who reports a lot of detail, finds that there's weird things that happen. Somebody crashes into a parked car with their bike. A street sign falls on a vehicle. Those all technically count as crashes when you're in an autonomous vehicle, especially in, this, in the state of California where all these things have to be recorded. But in Texas, a little bit more lax. And we've already seen that there has been a number of crashes. This is just what we know so far. So this is the dates you can see in this column. And then the little bit of information that we know about each one of these crashes. The troubling thing to me is that Tesla redacts almost all of the information about its crashes. So we don't know exactly what happened. We don't know whose fault it is. There is, remember, a safety driver in the vehicle. Is that not enough of a safety layer for Tesla vehicles? And they're going to have even more crashes when they pull that safety driver. We simply don't know because they redact a lot of this information. What we do know is that fog, dust, and glare have caused some crashes with Tesla's autonomous vehicles in the past. So has Tesla solved that problem? Are robotaxis actually safer than human drivers? We simply don't know based on the data that has been reported by Tesla to the public. So look at this as them still being in a testing phase, but now pulling that safety driver and looking at what does safety look like with Tesla vehicles. This is something that Waymo did a few years ago. So they are still well behind. And there are a number of competitors in the market. And these competitors are helped by companies like Uber and Lyft. Just look at AV Ride is launching in Dallas. They're doing robotaxi rides with Uber. And they are going to have a safety person in the vehicle. But there is a path to driverless. So a lot of these companies are looking at potentially 2026 is when they could potentially pull that safety driver. Mobileye, another company that has been working with Volkswagen, that's what you see is here is the ID Buzz. They are going to be launching vehicles in Norway. That's for a public transportation system. But the Mobileye Drive system is going to be used there. And they've been testing that for more than two years. They've got over 100 vehicles that are driving fully autonomously with a safety driver, not only in Austin, but also in Europe as well. Lyft is launching with Waymo in 2026 in Nashville. They also have a partnership with May Mobility that's operating in Georgia today. So when you add all this up, is Tesla going to be a competitor in this market? I think that's likely going to be the case. But it's not like they're going to do a software update tomorrow and have millions of vehicles going out for robo-taxi rides all over the country and all, all over the world. We are very, very long ways from that happening. This is going to be a city by city and a state by state rollout. That's what it's been for Tesla. It's what it's been for Waymo. And there's about a dozen companies that are all working towards getting supply to the market. They are all scaling at different rates. They all have different cost structures. But the bottom line is that all of them are moving forward with autonomous vehicle technology, and that's going to bring more supply to the market. So in a market where there's lots of supply of autonomous vehicles, who is going to be the ultimate winner? I think the answer is going to be the demand aggregators like Uber and Lyft. So let's look at those companies. And this is Fiscal AI. You can see Uber, I think a pretty solid valuation today. Uh, some one-time benefits in this 11 price to earnings multiple, but you can see price to earnings multiple even on a forward basis is about 25. That's for a company growing revenue at about 20%. So pretty good valuation given those growth numbers. And one of the things that I like to look at is just how diverse this business is. This is mo mobility, delivery, and freight. And you can see if we stack these together, you have a pretty diverse business in Uber, Uber and it's been just growing steadily over the past decade. Don't discount how big this delivery business is going to be. This is primarily food delivery today, but they're making a number of partnerships with retailers as well. So that could become another piece of their growth. Again, that's driven by them aggregating demand. Lyft falls more under the radar. And when I was buying shares of Lyft, they were trading for 10, 11 times earnings. Right now, forward priced earnings multiple is about 15. So not quite the same valuation as you got a few months ago. You can see over the past year, this has been a very, very solid performing stock. And like Uber, you have operating metrics that are moving in the right direction. Gross bookings here is in orange. In blue, you see the number of rides that they have. And then active riders is the pink line there. All these things are moving in the right direction. They're not growing quite as fast as Uber is. So what happens when you're the number two player? But I think they're in a pretty solid strategic position. And like I said, that valuation is really attractive. Just 15 times forward earnings estimates, just seven times free cash flow estimates. So 
Management at Lyft is also buying back shares. This could be much more of a value play if they can maintain that number two spot in the market, maintain the market share that they have there. If they were to gain a little bit of market share, that's where you really get the 10x opportunity for Lyft going forward. Now, if you look at Tesla, Tesla is trading as if they have already won this market. $1.5 trillion market cap, price earnings multiple, even on a forward basis, 223. That is just a crazy valuation for a company that's not even proven that it can actually do full autonomy yet today. Waymo has proven that. Other companies are on the path in a similar place to where Tesla is, but they've been promising this for over a decade now, and we have not seen it actually reach the market. Once it does reach the market, I think the business model that's going to win is the company that can aggregate demand because autonomy is not going to be something that only one company solves. The cost structure that Tesla has in place is not that much better than Waymo. It's not that much better than you what, what you would have with Volkswagen and Mobileye, for example, or a number of other players in the market. And in these early days, it's about answering the technology question, not about answering the cost question. That's why I think the drop in Lyft and Uber shares today is not something that I'm worried about. And if it continues, I'm more than happy to buy more shares because I think these are ultimately going to be the long-term winners. This is not a winner-take-all market. Tesla is not going to dominate this market. And in 2026, it's likely to see sales decline for electric vehicles as subsidies in the U.S. fall off. That will hurt its profitability. The market is overlooking that today. But that's the reality of the operating conditions in the market. But let me know what you think about the future of autonomy and where Uber and Lyft sit. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you here next time.